What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. This is BDGE. Big dogs gotta eat. Where are you? Big dogs gotta eat fantasy football. My name is Nicholas. Welcome, bike, to another Monday morning, another beautiful week in the world of fantasy football. The last few weeks have been filled. The void has been filled with must own running backs and wide receivers. We went round by round, one through nine for both of those positions. A lot of the talk, a lot of the chirping and chatter that I've done <coughs> into this microphone, into your ear holes, has been about those two positions because they are the most valuable. But that doesn't mean we could fade the other positions. You still have to draft a tight end. You still have to draft a quarterback, if not multiple quarterbacks, on your team. So, over the next two days, today and tomorrow, that would be two, we are going to be talking about my favorite tight ends. So the must-own tight ends for 2020 fantasy football. Tomorrow will be the quarterbacks. Fantasy football is happening. The NFL season is happening. Training camp is underway, people. Your league is happening. Your league is drafting, which means you need to grab a draft board. Draft now fantasy. Draft now fantasy. Say it with me. Draft now fantasy. Draft now fantasy. DraftNowFantasy.com has got a beautiful kit for you. It's got the entire draft board. This thing is monstrous. It would take up the entire screen if I unfolded it. 20 teams, 14 rounds. Switch that. 20 rounds, 14 teams. Lombardi trophy. Sash for the loser. Everything you need for a kit. Everyone throws in 4 or $5 and you're set because if you use promo code BDGE on DraftNowFantasy.com, you will get 10% off your order plus free shipping. It will be there with plenty of time left before your draft kicks off. I'm ready to get to the big facts before y'all kick me off your screen. So tuck your shirt in, stop yelling, and let's eat. So for the tight end position this year, typically I've been talking about I'm looking to grab two tight ends, two high upside tight ends at the end of drafts, okay? I'm not typically one to target the Kelseys or the Kittles, spew some shit like, oh, what a great positional advantage you had. Like running backs win your leagues, okay? Like I'm not really about to use a Travis Kelsey pick over a Josh Jacobs or a Miles Sanders or anything like that. So those guys are not going to be guys that I roster on the majority of my teams outside of like tight end premium. Then I'll then I'll start thinking about them in the, in the early second round, something like that. But there's one guy in the early rounds I do love, and you can catch the wave before he really, really enters that elite tier next year when he's a third, second round pick. We're talking about Mark Andrews of the Baltimore Ravens. What he did on limited snaps last year was, was nothing short of very unprofessional of me. Checking my phone in the middle of a recording. Lock it up, Nicholas. What this dude did on limited snaps last year was nothing short of, we'll say, uh, cheek clapping. All right. It was, it was incredible. And I think we can all agree he was pretty good last year. The tight end two in standard leagues. Tight end two, 0.8 fantasy points away from being a top three tight end in half PPR. I need to show you guys just how impressive the limited snap count was and what he did on it. Looking at this tweet, make sure you are following me on Twitter at Nick underscore BDGE because I'm tweeting out big facts, little facts, fake facts, fake news all the time on there. All right. Percentage of offensive snaps played for their team in 2019. Kelsey, 92.5%. Y'all could read the entire chart, but you look at the top five guys, they are playing at at least 75%, all the way up to 93%. Kelsey, the leader. You have Nick Boyle, the other Ravens tight end, played on 66% of their snaps. Go all the way down to 39th amongst tight ends. Hayden Hurst, 41.4%. Mark Andrews tied with Hayden Hurst for 41.4%. 39th amongst offensive snaps played for tight ends. Andrews was the tight end four in fantasy last year. Dog. 41.4% of snaps he played, and he was the tight end four. I get it. He scored 10 touchdowns last year, and that came on 64 catches. But if this guy gets even close to being a full-time player, there is no reason he can't live in that opportunity zone, maybe just below Kelsey and Kittle, 110, 115 targets. Andrews is going to be a monster this year. Going off that tweet for another one, routes run in 2019 per PFF. Kelsey down to Waller. 474, 478, 521, 543, 551. Mark Andrews down at tight end 25 with 295 routes run. This is where you get the edge in fantasy football. When you start looking at the advanced analytics, and that is brought to us, thankfully, by playerprofiler.com. 
When you look at this chart, not only is Andrews a phenomenal athlete, you see his speed score in the 85th percentile. When you're built like Mark Andrews, you should be staying on the field for all three downs. I think the Ravens coaching staff is pretty damn good. So I think they'll realize that and they will start to bump that playing time up. 6'5", 256. Dude runs a 4'6", 740 yard dash. You want to know how we know Mark Andrews is a playmaker? Because of that yards per set. I've, I've found through a lot of my research that that yards per reception number transfers over really, really well from college to the NFL. And that is for both wide receivers and tight ends. You see, I don't know why that fucking stupid gray box is in the middle of the screen, but I'm not going to be able to move it. The college yards per reception there, 15 and a half, 80th percentile. That almost always translates into these tight ends being big playmakers in the NFL. We want to talk about his tight end numbers or his touchdown numbers going to come down next year. He's going to more than make up for that with a lot of big plays through the air. But most importantly, you look in the bottom right, the hog rate, the hog rate, number one amongst all tight ends per player profiler this represents targets per snap to capture rate of passing game utilization on a per play basis so he's not on the most snaps all these other tight ends are playing a lot more snaps but when he is on for the snaps he's getting targeted more often than any tight end in the league and you jump over just two little spots there deep targets 20 this guy played on 41.4 percent of snaps last year tied for 39th in the nfl amongst tight ends number one in deep targets when he is on the field he's getting targeted and in extreme you want to talk about like why i don't love running backs like david johnson and why i don't love running backs like Le'Veon bell and leonard fournette it's because they're not getting the valuable touches right they're not getting tons of goal line work overall volume is not the same thing as valuable volume so when mark andrews is on the field not only is he getting utilized more than any other tight end in the red zone and near the end zone 10 touchdowns on 60 whatever catches last year but he's also getting targeted down the field. Those are so valuable. Number one in the NFL last year in deep targets. His only, his literally his only competition for targets this year is Hollywood. We see Hayden Hurst is gone, obviously, on Atlanta right now. Played on 42% of the snaps. Ran over 200 routes last year. Many, 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 many of those plays are now going to go over to Mark Andrews. This offense is going to be a complete funnel to Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews. This team is going to pass the ball a lot more than they did last year. And those passes are going to go to Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown. It wouldn't surprise me one bit, one tiny eensy weensy fucking bit if Mark Andrews ended the year as the tight end one in fantasy. I'm gobbling him up in the fourth and fifth round of every draft that he falls there. I don't know if I want to use a number three pick on him. I'll be honest with you. I love him. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm grabbing him up in the third round unless he falls to like the 311, 312, and that's where I'm drafting from. But fourth round, fifth round, he is a smash every single time. Someone who can easily be the tight end one in fantasy this year. And speaking of possibly being the tight end one in fantasy this year, we need to start putting some fucking respect on Darren Waller. Oh my God. This is like, th this has triggered me, man. This has gotten me upset. I'm, 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 I'm big mad about this. Like Darren Waller was just, he was too good last year. He was too good last year that there's no way he's actually good at football. Like, that's what people are basically saying. Uh, he can't be as good as he was last year because he was just too fucking good. Yeah, well, guess what? His numbers can come down. And he can still be very, 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 very good for fantasy football. Waller is my favorite and the only mid-round tight end I will be targeting in drafts this year. Right now, uh, if you look on Underdog Fantasy, which is the best ball app that we draft on every Thursday, our mock draft videos, my ownership percentage, which is a cool feature that they just rolled out, they show you the ownership percentage of players that you have on your teams. Darren Waller is, I think, my number two most owned tight end. I think like Dawson Knox is my number one because I get him in like the 17th round of every draft. I am hitting Darren Waller in the seventh round, the sixth to seventh round in almost every draft. I don't understand why people are making this so hard. Like, look at his profile. It's everything you look for in an elite fantasy tight end. 6'6", 255. He used to play wide receiver. He bulked up to 270. 4'4", 6. Like, that is legitimate. I don't care if that's tight end speed or wide receiver speed. Yes, he bulked up, so maybe that comes down, but he's still running elite tight end speed his 1145 receiving yards in his first year as the starter last year were 18 yards shy of zach Ertz's career high in a single season his 40 yard dash time is 0 0.04 seconds slower than evan ingram's while having 20 to 30 pounds on evan ingram he played a full 16 games in 2019 something hunter henry has never done while commanding 40 more targets than Hunter Henry ever has. So the argument for Darren Waller over any of these mid-round tight ends is, is really, really easy for me. And everyone's like, oh, Darren Waller was just a, a volume play here. Like he was the only weapon there. There's no way with all these new weapons coming in that Darren Waller can repeat what he did last year. It's just simply not true. 
by every efficiency metric, Darren Waller was incredible. He ran a route on the fourth highest rate of all tight ends in the NFL, 76.3%. I'm about to get into the big facts for you. He had the second most yards after the catch. So not only is he getting the volume, not only is he on the field to see the volume, but he's really good when he does get the ball in his hands. 4.9 yards after catch per target. 565 overall total yards after the catch. Second most amongst tight ends. Second in yards per target, 9.8. Sixth in yards per reception, 12.6 third in yards per route run, 2.87. The single highest contested catch rate, 57.9%. And the list goes on. And Waller is top five in basically all of them. I've said this before, and I'll continue to say it. Darren Waller is what people want Mike Kosicki to be. Mike Kosicki doesn't do shit with the ball in his hands. 51 receptions last year for Mike Kosicki. He broke zero tackles, zero tackles on 51 receptions. That is per sportsinfosolutions.com. So you have this guy in Darren Waller who has a, a elite athleticism, like elite amongst tight ends, right? His comparable player is Noah Fant on player profiler, right? There, it doesn't get more elite at the athleticism spectrum than that. He has the size to be playing on all three downs, which he already showed that he does. He has explosiveness, the yards per receptions, the deep targets. He has yards after the catch. And now like the, the thing about the players like this is like you have the profile, you have the size, you have the athleticism. A lot of them just don't translate it onto the field. And now we have a season in which he just went for 1,145 yards. I don't understand what box we're trying to check to tell us that Darren Waller is not going to be a beast again this year. And then you look at the offense, and I've made this point before, and I'm going to go deep into it tomorrow's video when I talk about Derek Carr and the quarterbacks. The passing game took a huge step up last year in Oakland. From year one to year two, we always see this with new offensive systems, new offensive schemes. It takes a year to get acclimated to it. It's usually not good for a first-year system. So with John Gruden in 2018... Going into 2019, we saw the offensive yards per game jump up from 23rd ranked to 12th ranked. Passing yards per game, 18th ranked up to 8th ranked. Yards per play, 21st up to 8th. Yards per pass attempt, 20 to 7th. And I expect that to take a jump forward in 2020. It's a rising tide, my friends. We, like, we, we're, we're concerned about these weapons, but like, what weapons do they really have there in Oakland? Tyrell Williams is whatever at this point. We have rookies, 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 right? Lynn Bowden, he's going to take five touches a game, probably a couple of them at the quarterback position one of their two of them at the like I'm not what if, if you're if you're just going to start throwing names out there just to fill this void that Darren Waller has left your fucking black soul inside of your heart you need to stop playing fantasy football because Lynn Bowden's not going to be a thing in in 2020 for fantasy football then you have two rookies like Brian Edwards is already fourth string they said wide receiver four on the depth chart I'm not worried about him taking a billion targets you have Henry Ruggs of course Henry Ruggs is going to be a thing this year in Oakland but that's one rookie that's one rookie that's really going to impact Darren Waller's targets I'm not worried about it the target comes competition argument has been far overblown in Oakland. Altogether, this is just, this is just a, an offense which you want a piece of when it comes to passing-wise. I'm telling you, but you need to get the right parts. Everything is in sync. Really good ground game, really good offensive line, good weapons now, and Derek Carr is underrated in terms of accuracy at the quarterback position. People are going to be like, oh, but Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro had three big games last year. Three. It was week eight. He went four for 88 and a touchdown. Week 16, he went seven for 107 and a touchdown. Week 17, he went six for 102 and a touchdown. Let's look at those three weeks and let's see what Darren Waller did in those games as well. In week eight, Waller saw eight targets and scored a touchdown. In week 16, he did have a bad game. He went four for four and 37 yards against a Chargers team that was absolutely stifling against the tight ends. If you look at the week after that, what the Chargers did to Travis Kelsey, they held him to a three for 24 line. So yeah, of course, some tight ends are just going to have bad games. It happens. Week 17, Renfro's third good game. Waller saw 10 targets, caught six balls for 107 yards. All right. Do I want my starting tight end to have more targets for competition, more co competition for targets? Obviously fucking not, but I'll continue to yell this commanding targets is a skill and Waller is nothing if not filled his entire body with skill his entire body is no longer filled with alcohol okay his entire body is filled with athleticism and you love to see it so in conclusion Mark Andrews and Darren Waller are the only two tight ends this year I'm even thinking about before round eight but what happens after round eight right I talk about double stacking two high upside tight ends I like Jonu Smith, but I'm not sold that he's going to get enough volume to be the guy that I love. I like Dallas Goddard. He's okay. I like TJ Hawkinson a lot too, but this whole foot thing kind of scares me a little bit. I'll take one of those one of those random guys there, right? But the one guy that I do actually have the number one, I think I lied about the ownership percentage. Let me see. Yep. The guy who I own the, the most shares of, the most shares of, I will tell you in one second, but y'all have to scroll down and hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video thus far takes two seconds. It helps us creators out a lot. Anytime I watch a video, 
I don't care if it's football or tech, ASMR. I know there's a lot of weirdos out there that like that shit. I appreciate what creators do, the amount of work they put into this stuff. So I always scroll down and hit a thumbs up. And I would appreciate if y'all did that as well. Let's me know that you like my videos and I'll continue making them for y'all. So hit the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, obviously subscribe because we're putting out heaters in theaters six, seven days a week. We will be back tomorrow, of course. So again, subscribe, put notifications on so you know when my films go into theaters. Also, if you want all of the must own players, if you want every position, quarterback, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, as well as my top sleepers, my undervalued players, our official do not draft list, as well as our rankings, which is a printable cheat sheet for the day of your draft and our Bible, which is our entire strategy write up for exactly how to attack your draft this year position by there's about 17,000 good exclusive pieces of content in our draft guide okay and our draft guide this year is sponsored by monkey knife fight our draft guide is live all three of our draft guides are live and you'll be able to get them for literally ten dollars okay so since monkey knife fight is sponsoring our draft guide go to monkeyknifefight.com deposit ten dollars or more very important that y'all put the promo code bdg in there okay deposit ten dollars or more using the promo code bdge in there and play a game on their site, okay? And once you play a game, they will email me the following day, and that's when I will give you access to the draft guide. So monkeyknifefight.com, deposit 10 or more with promo code BDGE, play a game, and I will email you access the following day. That will get you the season-long draft guide with all the stuff I talked about. That'll get you the rookie dynasty kit. So maybe you don't play dynasty, but you still got all the write-ups on the rookies as well as other strategy and, and things that I promise you will help be useful for your 2020 fantasy football season even if you're in just a one-year league then you got dr morse's complete injury guide which looks at like 70 different players anyone who is even close to remotely injured he will look at their outlook going into 2020 i promise you this is the best deal on the interwebs monkeyknifefight.com promo code bdge when you deposit let's look at these later round tight ends and there's just one there's one and one only that i'm looking at easily the most under the radar fantasy tight end this year i have him i believe i have him up as tight end seven in my rankings again my rankings are only available through the draft guy i would legitimately be completely comfortable using him as my starting tight end in 2020 and I haven't really heard a word about Cook this offseason. Everyone seems to be off him. It's as if he didn't finish as the tight end seven last year in 14 games. I want to tell the story behind Jared Cook. Even before that, right? He had that blow up year in Oakland. And everyone was like, ah, the same thing that everyone's making the deal of Darren Waller. He was the only target. There's no way he can repeat this. Then he comes over to the Saints and he's the tight end seven. So he goes from like the tight end five to the tight end seven. It's all these regression arguments. He can't possibly do it again. He can't possibly do it again. Maybe Jared Cook is just good at football, right? He comes over to the Saints and he starts the year off very slowly. Most fantasy gamers, they dropped him and they forgot all about him. Cook was new to this offense, okay? And supposedly he came into the year with a little bit of an ankle injury. He started to heat up though. Weeks five and six, he dropped a four for 41 in a touchdown line, a three for 37 in a touchdown line. And then he injures his ankle, which was probably the same ankle he came into the year with a little little bit of an injury. He re-injured it. But man, when Cook came bike in week 10, he was literally a set it and forget it fantasy option at tight end. From weeks five through 17, he played in the total of 10 games. You guys need to, you guys need to hear this. I need you to like, I really need y'all to tuck your shirts in. Tuck it the fuck in. Weeks five through 17, Jared Cook played in 10 games. He had double digit half PPR points in nine of 10 games. Fantasy tight ends don't do that. He did that. That included an 18.9 game, a 19.4 game, and a 21.9 game. Look at Cooks' numbers with versus without Drew Brees under center in 2019. Because when he came back, remember, Drew Brees was still hurting himself. So by the time those two finally got back on the field together, it was fucking lights out. The 10 games. He played in 10 games with Drew Brees. He averaged almost 12 half PPR fantasy points, almost 13 and a half full PPR fantasy points. The way I look at Jared Cook is, okay, like well, I'm not worried about Adam Troutman. He's a rookie tight end. He's not going to make an impact this year statistically. Emmanuel Sanders does give me a little bit of concern, but again, rising tides. Like what more do you want from a tight end than like, look at this objectively. Look at it objectively. You have someone with really, really good athleticism, someone who is a downfield playmaker, someone in a really good offense tied to a really good quarterback. He set career highs in both touchdowns, receptions, receiving touchdowns. Sorry, that came out really confusing. Set career highs in receiving touchdowns as well as yards per reception. He was a downfield playmaker. He was a red zone threat. 
You want red zone threats. You want big plays. You want guys who are on the field. You want accurate quarterback, a really good quarterback, and a really good offense that are going to give you those red zone opportunities. Jared Cook checks every fucking box. And there was a good article I read. I'll see if I could find it to link it, but they were talking about training camp out of the Saints. They were talking about just how big of a part of this offense that Jared Cook was supposed to be last year and will be. They said the second half of last year is what we should expect from Cook this year. He's going to be a very big part of this offense and coming into the second year again those offenses especially for like players who need to get acclimated it usually takes a year for that shit to click you could make all the regression arguments you want i just think he's going to be a good football player on a very good team and probably throw up like 65 for 700 and maybe seven to eight touchdowns and i'll take that all day in like round 10 at my tight end position we got mark andrews we got darren waller jared cook all three guys with elite athleticism all three guys with very good quarterbacks at least accurate or good in their own way. Y'all know what I'm talking about. In offenses that I think should be very good in 2020. Red zone options, deep options. You'll see us you'll see a theme between all the guys that I like. They make big plays and they score big touchdowns, okay? That's what we're looking for. When we get later into the drafts, the guy we cannot stop hearing buzz about is Chris Herndon out in New York. I'm ready to give this guy another chance. Last season, we were all hyped up about him. We were really, really excited about Chris Herndon. And then he gets injured and he misses a bunch of time. And when he comes back, he's like kind of injured, kind of not injured. He just last year was a complete wash. But we've heard nothing but like crazy, crazy, crazy good things out of camp from the Jets. And this is, again, where there's smoke, there's fire. When you start hearing it from players, from coaches, from executives, from front office, from beat reporters, which is what we've been hearing about Chris Herndon, that's when you got to turn the light bulb on. Chris Herndon was so good in his rookie year, so underrated. We just don't have his athleticism because he wasn't at the combine. But I promise you, if we did, if we had those numbers, we would be so much more sold on Chris Herndon. Right now, he's going off the board as like the tight end 22, I believe. And I'll smash him as my tight end too all day and tomorrow. Denzel Mims is already hurt, so I almost feel like this is going to be a wash of a season for the rookie wide receiver. I hate when rookies get hurt in the summer, especially pass catchers, because that's just such a tough position to acclimate yourself to as a rookie. I think Chris Herndon is a good bet to maybe not lead the team in targets, but be up there in the 90, 85 to 90 range. And someone that you're getting so late, Chris Herndon, rookie year, the receiving yardage number was like top 12 amongst all rookie tight ends since like the year 2000. He had a really, really underrated, really good rookie year as a receiver. And I'm excited to see what he can do in 2020. I'm, I'm ready to give him chance number two. If he lets us down this year, get the fuck out of here. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's all I got for y'all. But remember, 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 support your favorite creators by doing a few things, hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel if you're new. And again, fantasy football is happening, people. It's happening. If your league decided not to play this year, tell them to grow the fuck up and start the league. You got three, four weeks to still make it happen. It ain't that hard. Do a live draft with your friends. If you're doing a live draft with your friends, your family, make sure you head over to draftnowfantasy.com. Draftnowfantasy.com has got a kit, a beautiful kit for like 70 bucks, 10% off using promo code BDGE. You get it for like 60 bucks between 12 people. That's $5 a person. Look how good at math I am. TI-83, shout out. My daily shout out to my TI-83 calculator. You get the Lombardi trophy. You get the sash. You get the draft board, the player stickers. Draftnowfantasy.com, promo code BDGE for 10% off plus free shipping. And make sure y'all grab the draft guide, the draft guide, the draft guide. You'll never have to listen to another video I put out. I promise you. It saves, it's going to save you 10 hours of research having it in your palm. Um, it is available on your phone, on your tablet, on your iPad, on your television, on your fucking radio, on your 8-track player. It's available everywhere, except for those last like three fucking things I named. MonkeyKnifeFight.com. What am I doing over here? We're having a fucking day. I'm about to have a day. Have a happy Saturday. It's Saturday here, but it's Monday for you. So have a great Monday. I love y'all, and I'll see you tomorrow.